Hey everyone, I am Tribal Instincts and welcome to my home. Uh, I'm about to walk you through how to actually set up your HTC Vive to where it is a similar setup to this, where you have you know, your standard computer, while you also have a secondary display for your friends and family to see what you see. I'm also going to walk you through how to set up your OBS setup to where you can take the output that is going directly to this thing and setting it up to the interwebs so that other people can see actually what you are seeing and not the modified view. If you're watching this video for the very first time and you've just gotten your HTC Vive and you're looking for how to set it up, stop what you're doing and update your graphics drivers. And also download Steam VR. You'll find that in the tools section of Steam. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the lighthouses. You'll see here that I just have one single cable going down the back of it, that is power. And on the front, you'll see in the very top, you'll see a white light, and then you'll also see a letter. In this case, on this one, that is a C. And over on the other side of my room, we have this one, and that one is currently set to B. The significance of those two letters is you have A, B, and C. You will want them set to B and C, if they are within direct line of sight, meaning if they can see each other, then you want B and C. If there's something in the way, like a fan or maybe a light fixture, you're going to want one of them to be A and the other one to be B. You'll notice that both of them are angled slightly down, facing the very center of my room. Uh, this may not be the exact angle that you want, however, this has worked so far for me. The point is that they should be able to see each other as well as your floor. So in addition to the actual lighthouses themselves, you obviously have the headset. One of maybe the most important pieces, right? Uh, so here it is. So you have the headset, and then you have this really long cable that's coming out the back of it. Here you have an HDMI cable, you have USB, and you also have a power cable. Those are all piping through the back of the headset up into the front mounting uh, area. In addition to those three cords, I also have the optional uh, USB as well as the audio cable plugging in here. Um, that's again routing up to here, and I'll show you that in a moment. But uh, from here, you can plug in any USB <clears throat> headset or you know any standard headset that you have, and that'll work just fine. I've actually tried both of those where I've used uh, a uh, Logitech G35, I believe, which is USB. That one worked. I also have a set of earbuds. Those work just as well too. So all of those go directly into here. Uh, this little, this top cover, you push it forward, kind of push it down and forward uh, in order to slide this thing up and out. Uh, and here we have everything actually plugged directly in. So all of those components go in there. And again, those two cables that are kind of short up the back here, those are optional. If you want to, you can take them out through here. And just like that, it goes back on. In addition to the headset itself, like I said, we have the cables. Those go into this breakaway box. Here we have orange on one side, black on the other. These have orange on them. Orange goes to orange, black goes to black. So once you have those plugged in, these are the cables here. These, these are the ones that actually go to your, to your computer itself. Uh, you have the HDMI cable. This is just plugs into any HDMI 2.0 slot on your computer. Uh, you have a power adapter, and then you also have the HDMI cable. Pretty simple stuff. I do recommend plugging these into your computer and then wrapping these around uh, so that you can actually plug them in afterwards. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I will show you how to plug in a cable here. Good at this, huh? Alright, so this is the back of my computer, obviously. So what we want to do now is plug in the HDMI cable that is going from the back of the uh, breakaway cable. You want to plug that in there. And you also want to plug in your USB. So inside this wad of cables here, we have one of my DisplayPort cables going out and around and around and around, all the way up to this amazingly cheap, made in China, HDMI splitter. So it's taking one of those, and it's routing one of those cables up to my actual monitor. And then we have this cable here, that's going over to my TV. Now that we have everything plugged in, uh, one of the main goals that I found in positioning this is making sure that these cables go as close to where you're actually going to be using it as possible. That extra foot or two sometimes really makes a difference, especially if you have a larger room scale setup. Um, so here, you see here we have the cables that are going to the computer and the cables that are going to the actual headset itself. You plug them in. Ta-da! Alright, we've got everything plugged in now. However, it seems like I might have forgotten one of the pieces.
these are important. They really are. Uh, so <laughs> here are the controllers. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to say about these as far as how to get them set up because they just work. They automatically sync with your headset right whenever you get it out of the box. Um, so kudos for them for making that so easy. Um, the only thing I will say about them is that they do come with, uh, both of them, they come with their own uh, typical HTC USB charging adapter. So, you know, you have the wall nub uh, and the cable that plugs into it. Uh, those cables also double as the way that you can uh, update the firmware of these as if you guys don't have 10,000 uh, micro USB cables lying around. Um, but the cables at the bottom, uh, you plug that into the computer, same thing to charge it. Uh, and if you need a firmware update, it's a fairly painless process. If you're at this point, then you should be completely set up and ready to go. You should have your headset plugged in. Uh, it should have a white light on the left side. So right here, actually. Yep. If everything is set up to where it should be, this light should be white, not blinking. It shouldn't be red. It should be white. And inside the headset itself, it should just be black. Okay. And to change that, we're going to open up Steam VR. We have two, two different options. You can either change your library to where you can go into the installed, and then you can open it up here, or you can click this button in the top right-hand corner to start Steam VR. All right, there we are. My Steam VR is up and ready now. I can turn these on. And in a few seconds, that should go from gray to green. Excellent. The headset is enabled but not tracking. So let me put them within line of sight of the trackers. And ta-da! SteamVR is up and ready to go. Now you can launch your game of choice and enjoy. All right, troubleshooting. So what's on the screen right now is probably the most common issue that I've had to deal with, especially with my stream setup. I like to be able to capture the raw output that's going to the headset itself and put that in the, the stream without opening up the CPU intensive mirror mode. Uh, so that way you can actually see the full view that the end user with the actual headset on is seeing. So what is it? Um, like I told you, here, let me show you what my setup looks like. This is it. Um, ignore this one right now. This is technically my middle monitor. Um, however, OBS doesn't seem to like to capture an entire window whenever I have like four of these things going. Um, so I had to disable that for you guys to be able to see my left monitor here. Um, so this is my setup. Uh, yours will look probably similar. Um, so if you're not using direct mode again, the way that you get through this is getting rid of anything that's on the screen. This one right here, this is actually what's going to my headset itself. And right now, the HTC Vive, or the, sorry, it, Steam VR cannot get this thing to actually display in full screen so that it can go directly to there. Sometimes you can just click this button and it'll go away. Other times it won't. If there's any window that's actually been moved over there, then it will freak out. It can't do it. Um, so like if I were to drag this window over away right here, and I would have put it far into, you know, the wherever slot one is, then that's what would cause this. So to get rid of it, make sure you close out of any applications that you can't see directly on your monitor. Also, make sure that your monitor that you're viewing is marked as your main display. That is absolutely critical. Um, and in this case, yep, number four is my main display. That's my left-hand screen. Uh, if number one is your main display, or if the one that's going to your headset is the main, that's where your, a lot of windows are actually going to start up. So that will be a common issue for you. Uh, so again, close out of any windows that you can't actually see on your monitor, and then sometimes you still need to go through and restart Steam VR. However, in some cases, you can just click that button, wait for it to go through, and then it's fine. But if you click that button and nothing happens, more than likely you have a display on there or just something happened, close out of your windows and restart Steam VR, and then your problem is usually solved. So issue number two. Calibration issues for the controller, or maybe it's just not pairing, maybe it's not syncing, whatever the case may be. Uh, this seems to be a fairly one-size-fits-all fix to this. Um, so the first issue that I had whenever I turned these things on was it was acting as if I was touching down in the bottom left, and actually it was on both controllers, even though my hand wasn't touching it. And so even if I were to try to move it somewhere else, it was always going back down to the bottom left. Very annoying. You couldn't play any game with that. To get rid of that, you need to resync or repair the controller. Also, recalibrated is another way that it's described. So to do that, we're going to press and hold this button, the trigger, while holding down this power button. So to do that, holding down that one, holding down this trigger, and then holding down the power button. 
You heard it beep once, and then it has a two octave beep a few seconds later, and now it's blinking blue. So in the Steam VR in the settings, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pair controller. There we go. There's one. Let's do the other one. From what I've seen, you do need to pair both of them at the same time. I'm not sure if that's required, though. There we go. So now this one's blinking. Pair another. Ta-da! So here's another common issue, or at least the issue that I had whenever I first got started. Headset not connected properly. The headset appears to be connected. Uh, everything appears to be right. There's no lights or anything going to the headset. It's like the headset just isn't working, right? Horribly terrifying experience whenever you first get it. Um, so in my case, one of, well, in my case, the cause of this was I had my actual headset disabled. So there's, there's two ways to get around this. One of them is to enable it the way I showed you before from my setup where it is a secondary or a additional display. Um, a better way though is to go into devices and turn it on into, to, into direct mode. Okay? That will get around this issue uh, for this at least this particular cause. Uh, in my case though, I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to extend desktop to this display. All right, and then I'm gonna restart Steam VR. As a last general troubleshooting tip, go through everything, right? Start from the very beginning and go through, unplug every single cable and plug it back in. Make sure everything is nice and tight. You should have three connections going from the breakaway cable to your, well, two of them to your computer and then one of them should be power. You should have three cables going from that breakaway box up to your headset and Everything there should be nice and snug. There shouldn't be any, any loose cables at all. Once that's done, turn off your computer, turn it back on, restart Steam VR, check to make sure that your display settings doesn't have a, an additional monitor that you have no idea what that is off somewhere that's disabled. Go through those settings, update your graphics drivers, update Steam VR, uh, and that you will usually resolve all issues that you might have. If you have any further questions or anything that's not resolved in, in those troubleshooting steps, uh, drop a comment below. Um, I am more than willing to help out with any questions you guys might have. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh crap! I'm actually doing it! Oh crap!